How's it going? It's a shitty night tonight. I have two tables, all black people, so I know I'm not making no tips. Are you being serious right now? Yeah, look over there. I have two tables. They're all black. I'm working for free tonight. No, I, I mean, are you being seriously that racist? What? But you don't know that I got to tip you. Yes, I do. So just because they're black? I've been waiting tables for five years. I never got a tip from a black person. Not once. Uh, first of all, I don't believe you. Second of all, that's still racist. <laughs> I am not racist. Screw you. What are you talking about? She says black people don't tip. Are you nuts? Niggas don't tip. Everyone knows that. Have you ever waited tables before? No. Then shut up, asshole. Uh, uh, listen, first the fat boys break up. Now every day I wake up. Somebody got a problem with hope. What's up, y'all niggas all fed up? Cause I got a little cheddar and my wreck is moving out the store. Young fuckers spitting at me, young rappers getting at me. My nigga big predicted this shit exactly. More money, more problems, gotta move carefully. Cause faggots hate when you get their money like athletes. Youngins ice grilling me, oh, you not feeling me fine. It costs you nothing, pay me no mind. Look, I'm on my grind, cousin, ain't got time for fronting. Sensitive thugs, y'all all need hugs. Damn, little mans, I'm just trying to do me. If the wreck is two mil, I'm just trying to move three. Get a couple chicks, get them to try to do me. Hopefully they're menage before I reach my garage. I don't want much, fuck, I drove every car. Some nice cooked food, some nice clean drawers. Bird ass niggas, I don't mean to rubble y'all. I know you waiting in the wing, but I'm doing my thing. Where's the love? I said, where's the love? Day I wake up, somebody got something to say. What's all the fucking fussing for? Because I'm grubbing more, and I pack heat like I'm the oven door. Niggas pray and pray on my downfall. But every time I hit the ground, I bounce up like round. I go hard in the motherfucking oh, paint. Yeah. Nigga, leave Damn. your stinking nigga. Uh, what the fuck Blah. you thinking, nigga? I. Uh. Don't die for this shit or Locker. what the fuck I say front Flocker. yard broad Black. Okay with the S K Boom 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 C Gucci that's my motherfucking nigga, nigga. nigga. I hang Slavery and the Dale with uh. them hit squad Civil Rights Killers uh. Waka Flocka Flame One Hood and your Kings Nigga Ride real slow in the corner in my NAACP nigga. Hey, welcome to the Black Guy Tips ah, podcast ah, ah, ah. with your host Rod and Karen. And we got our guest here, here, Will. What's up, everybody? And, uh, you know, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my dad because today is his birthday. It's so, me. happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, old man. Yeah, so, you know, just wanted to say I appreciate you being a sufficient father. As opposed to the insufficient daddy and we're about to get into today. Uh, and, uh, you know, I know he listens to the podcast so, so, sometimes. And I called him today. And, you know, women are, like, better than calendars. You know what I'm saying? They're better than than, than uh, PDAs. Like, I, I had a reminder on my phone to call my dad on his birthday. And my mom and Karen texted me before my re- reminder went out. Like, like I was gonna, birthday, don't yeah. call <laughs> Like I was gonna forget, you know. But yeah, I'm thankful for that, though. At least they were thinking about them. Yeah. Um, and uh, this podcast might be a little ignorant because I've been listening to Waka Faka Hard in the Paint hmm. for uh, at least about two hours a day. That is a classic on repeat. Cause you know I go hard in the motherfucking paint, nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Leave you stinking, nigga. Uh, so I, I was listening to that, man. It's crazy, too, because, like, uh, like when I was listening to it, man, I was going into the gym, you know, to do my part-time job, and I was feeling more ignorant. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, people were speaking. I wouldn't speak back to them. And this, you know, like, uh, I, would see, I would see, like, people walking around. I would just ice grill them. For no damn reason. Yeah, it's just that flock, it was, it was flowing through me, man. I couldn't, I couldn't stop myself. You know, I walked in the gym and I was like, waka, 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 uh, waka, waka, waka. I couldn't, I couldn't take it, man. I had to turn the shit off, man. I was about to have a nigga moment. Yeah, for real, dog. Um, uh, so anyway, man, uh, 
Don't forget to leave comments on our podcast. You can go on iTunes and leave us a review. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also go on Facebook or Podomatic.com and you can leave us uh, comments on our episodes and rate our podcast. Um, and, you know, we thank everybody that does that, everyone who joins the Facebook group. Yeah. We appreciate that. And we appreciate your comments and your questions. And, um, you know, you can also go to the blog, the blackguytips.blogspot.com, and uh, don't forget, you know, click on that donate button. We appreciate all the donations too. That helps us uh, keep this podcast going and keep getting it out to you folks. Um, because getting to be so many of y'all, man, y'all are starting to cost me money. Yeah, cause we just upgraded and get going. Like we're gonna have to do it again soon, don't it? I know, man. <laughs> I was saying, I hope people don't wait till the uh, podcast stop downloading in the middle of the month to be like, hey, dog, <laughs> what's going on? What's going on with your podcast? I should have gave a couple of dollars, I guess. Um, but, uh, you got yeah. Your phone up too? Yeah, I was just going to okay. get into that. You can contact us um, through the voicemail line at 704 557 0186. And you can also email the show, theblackguywhotips at gmail.com. So make sure, you know, if you if something we say is funny and you're listening to the podcast and you're near a phone, call us, you know, if an issue comes up, you want to leave a comment or just chime in on something that we say here, go ahead and do that, you know. Um, and this is the unofficial podcast of Bullet Ball. Yes, it is. Right? Bullet Not official. Ball. Not official. Not official. And Bullet Ball Extreme. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the official weapon of the podcast is? Taser. That's right. Um, so, I was watching last night, Karen watched it with me, the Bad Girls Club. Yes. I can't, I can't watch that, man. Uh, you don't watch uh, it, man? I can't, I can't, man. Somebody called me um, on Twitter, on Twitter, they were like, man, you keep tweeting about the Bad Girls Club, you gonna make me watch it. And, uh, I said, you can ask, uh, Patrice C. Patrice is this, uh... Uh, lady that does she has a blog called Hell and Heartaches yeah, yeah it's real I'm, good I checked it out yeah, yeah yeah it's funny as hell it's hilarious uh, she's always on top of shit she's always finding like it's weird too cause like I'll go on like Bossip or uh, some other website and look for news but then she'll find some shit that ain't been on other another website I'm like how did you find that <laughs> like, yeah. where did this come from <laughs> yeah so uh, but yeah she has a great website and I go there all the time and she um I, but she always gets on because I end up making her watch the real world every season, or at least the ones that I've been on Twitter. Cause mm-hmm. I'll tweet about it and then she'll be like, oh, "You gonna make me check this shit out?" And damn you! And then she hit me back and be like, "That girl was dressing like a hoe or whatever, right?" <laughs> I, and I, so she called me a pusher of trash TV. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was about to watch Real World last time I was on the show, but shit. By the time I got home, I forgot about it. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty ignorant this year. And Bad Girls Club was so bad. Roger had to console me after went out there. <laughs> she was Karen was Karen was watching the TV getting irate, <laughs> like the bitches was in our house. <laughs> I was like, baby, calm down. It's gonna be okay. They're not coming here, okay? Okay. Uh, as soon as we change the channel, they're gone. Like they were frustrating, Karen. Right, let right? me see that bitch in the street. I will yeah. fuck her. Yeah. Up. <laughs> so, man, I didn't um, take it. I'm sorry. So you know, a lot of people, a lot of men, find oxygen to be too womanly a channel for you to watch anything on there. A little too much estrogen flow. Yeah. That despite now. that, these women are in bathing suits and thongs and stuff and, and they dancing they like hoes. Sometimes. And uh, the, oh, yeah. well, I'm only talking about Bad Girls Club. Yeah. I haven't watched they, anything else on the show. Like hoes. Yeah, they was really dancing like some hoes. Yeah, like doing spread eagle splits in, in, in mini dresses and that thong yes. show. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So well, I came up with an alternative. So, you know, if you listen to this podcast and you do want to watch the Bad Girls Club, but you don't want to feel like a little bitch, you know, I feel you guys. You don't want other dudes to look at you and be like, so you was watching, what channel is that on? Oxygen? Oh man, you be watching Oxygen. My wife watches that. You well, watch man, Lifetime movies Oxygen too? is banned from my house. You're right. I got right? <laughs> so I don't, like, I understand the frustration. So what I did is I renamed the channel. So from now on, I'm calling it The Ox. <laughs> <laughs> the you see, ox. ox is a strong animal. <laughs> yes, it is. And it sounds, you know, more manly. So I was like, yeah, I was watching Bad Girl Club. On the ox. <laughs> oh y'all don't y'all don't watch the ox. Okay. You don't know about the ox. <laughs> yeah, stick to ESPN Quattro or whatever the fuck y'all on now. I fucks with the ox. 
No, the O sound like a female. That sound like, like Oprah. That sound like Oprah's. Yeah, Oprah's chair. Oh, Oprah's magazine. Yeah, not yeah. the O. Okay. The ox. The ox. Uh, ox is. You, and you know gotta say it like that too. You yeah. can't say. I was watching the ox. No, it's gotta. Be, yeah. <laughs> It's like D A ox. You gotta say it ignorant. You gotta say it like waka flock. <laughs> the ox. I was watching the ox. So um anyway, man, these <laughs> these girls this year, they went down, they're in South Beach now. Yes, they are. So everybody's taking their talent to South Beach. LeBron, Jersey Shore. No. <laughs> the, the, um, the, Lord, now, where is that? The Bad Girls Club. And these these women, ladies, <laughs> ladies if you will. <laughs> uh, the, the shit they get into is so ridiculous. One girl came in the house late, like all the other girls were there. So she came in late, she had to pick out her bed. And she was just trying to have polite conversation with them. And this other chick just tried her for no reason. Like, yeah. within 10 minutes of meeting her, she threw a drink on her. Damn. Like, she didn't even know her name yet. She's just like, I don't like you. I don't like the way you came in here. I don't like the way you look. Splash. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm in. I, they didn't make it to the first commercial break without a fight. Normally, the first, and, a, the, and it was the premiere. So, normally, yeah. in a premiere, the first, like, half hour is just really them, like, getting to know getting each, each other, other yeah. going in each other's room, picking out, you know, they always show them picking out the mansion, and then they show them in like the private room talking, and then they'll be like, you know, in, the, in person, they're like, Oh, hey, Vicky girl, you look good. What is this, a bathing suit in public? Oh, this is beautiful. And then later on, they show them like, That bitch was dressing like a hoe. I can't believe the nerve of this bitch to wear a bathing suit in public. But they was doing that shit to each other's face. I'm it was crazy. To, I'm gonna have to get on the ox, I'm in. Man. I am in. I, I, unabashedly, I'm watching it on the ox. <laughs> okay, I'm in. And if you don't want to, hey, maybe you have to unfollow me Tuesday nights around 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. <laughs> Cause I'm watching that shit. It is must see appointment viewing from now on. Ah, uh, oh, it was beautiful, dog. Uh, they was they was fighting already. Like this chick, yeah. This one chick, man. She lives in the house. She walks around in a bathing suit all, all day, day long. Two days in a row. First day, I thought, well, like she pulled up on top of a, a, a yacht or a boat or something, uh -huh. and she's like, "Hey, bitches!" It's always cool, cause you know, women that don't know each other for some reason can call each other bitch yeah. to their face. <laughs> 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 Like, even when I don't know, like, when I don't even know, like, black people, like, say it's a group of black brothers, like, it's a group of brothers sitting out, and I'm supposed to pull up, and maybe I'm gonna ride to the party or something. I would not get out the car and be like, what's up, niggas? Get in the car. I don't know you yet. <laughs> but apparently, if you're in the bad girls club, you can call each other bitch already. Yeah, it's a term of endearment. It's in the contract. Right. So, of course, you know, these bitches are all um, ready to roll, and they would call, and it, it's funny, because they were like, um... They kept referring to the term pop off. And I don't know if y'all remember when Tanisha was on there. The big black girl that had the pants. Yeah. And woke everybody up. Ago. And yeah. she she would always just be like, Don't make me pop off. I'm about to pop off, son. I'm about to pop off. <laughs> so all these chicks ref, ref, referred to popping off at one point. Like, they live to be on this show. There's yeah. no redeeming value to the show. Like, oh. and when it first started, I remember people being like, well, look, Oprah wants to help these girls <laughs> learn about their issues. Man, they aren't even trying no more. It's just like, where's the gin? Hey, bitch, I'm about to pop off. Scratch, fight, cut, burn. <laughs> they took one girl, the girl in the bathing suit, rubbed everybody the wrong way. Because she was from South Beach. Mm -hmm. So she thought she was the shit. And she already had her like friends there. So she invited her friends over to the crib. Of course, nobody liked them. Yeah. You know? And there was some straight up dudes from uh, Jersey Shore. Like They looked like the dudes that tried to get on Jersey Shore. But they and didn't they did make it. Yeah. So they came in there and they were trying. You could tell they were trying real hard to be funny for the camera. Making uh -huh. these corny ass jokes. And the girls didn't like them or whatever. So since they didn't like her and her friends, she picked two girls in the house that she was cool with. And they went out to the club. Man, she came back. They had packed all her shit up Damn. and put it on the front porch. <laughs> and then they tied a rope around the front door so she couldn't even come in. Damn. They're like, we going to get out. And how are you going to mess with the chick that's from there? That's the wrong person to fuck with. Because like, it's like fucking with me and I live in Charlotte. Y'all ain't from here. Don't let me. I will. I'll gladly leave the show. Gladly. But I'm gonna see your ass at the club, brother. Believe it. Hey, but so Believe many places you know. Yeah. I'm gonna catch y'all out one night, and I'm gonna knock y'all off individually. It's not gonna be a fun time. I'm from here, so it was just crazy, dude. And the funniest part for me was one of the black girls. 
she knew she knew they was about to fight. So she had them spray her with bug repellent. Bug repellent. Because she said when you when you when with bug repellent it's oily. So she said, so if they punch you, she said that the the right Yeah. Off. I was like, damn it, that's that's the next level of fight. You yeah. know you, you know you hood when you just like I need some Vaseline. We don't have no Vaseline. All right. I need the bug spray. Yeah. <laughs> Crisco. Who got Crisco? We got some, well, you got some olive oil? All right, wet, wet me down. And she was, but the thing that was funny is they was all hyped when they, when the chick wasn't there. Soon as she came back and was banging on the door, didn't nobody know shit. Before that, they was like, I'm going to tell that bitch. When she walk up in here, I'm about to tell her you got to get the fuck out. Majority rules. Four to three, bitch. Then soon as she showed up, they, who threw my shit? Who touched my shit? Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. That shit was like that when I got here. <laughs> you know me. I was sleeping. I was just sleeping in my bud repellent. You know how I do. <laughs> you don't want to do no shit like that to you. We cool, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I use your bud repellent. Now. Um, so, and then, man, they were like trying to go out to the club. And did you ever see women dancing so slutty? That is not attractive? Yeah. Like, it was weird. Like, it went from, like, a, this weird zone of, like, you know, and one of these chicks is like a um, video hub. Like, she used to date Beanie Siegel, and um, yeah. they have to have one of those she's been shows. linked to Drake, according to her own words. And she said, I, I mean, I'm not a gold digging hoe, but I guess you, she was like, no, I guess you could call me a gold digging hoe. I mean, if you want to, I don't care. So she pretty much said she was a gold digger, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, and why a gold digger would be fucking with dudes? Like, the rap mm-hmm. game must be. Crazier than I thought, man. Dried up. Yeah. <laughs> Beans? Damn. Maybe like, she just ain't up on gold digging game. Dang. Got to start somewhere. I seen Beanie Seagull in person. I don't, I don't get it. No. <laughs> what is she doing? She couldn't find an average nigga? No. I don't know. Anyway. So she was messing with Beans or whatever. And then she said she was linked to Drake, which I don't know what that means. She just was at a club and took a picture with him, or she fucked him, or because she didn't like, she didn't seem like the type of person that wouldn't come out and say I fucked Drake. You know what I'm saying? She was pretty upfront about being a cold digging hoe. Yeah. yeah, it was probably just that you know she wanted to, but she ain't never get that far. But she was like, well, I gotta say something to commit yeah. myself to him. So Drake was probably scared of the pussy. Probably. He's so he's so sad. He's waiting for Nicki Minaj. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't Nicki. I don't want it. <laughs> I mean, he probably came out on the winning end because, you know, I don't care how fine crazy it is. It's still crazy. Say that again. You still got to deal with crazy in the morning. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, but anyway, man, so, and then this other chick, the one that was in the bathing suit, she was, it's always ironic to hear her say, like, she would talk about the other girls in the house and be like, you know, I'm not like the rest of these trashed bitches. And then she gets up and walks out in the bathing suit. You're like, are you serious? <laughs> She's like, yes, I wear a bathing suit all day because I look good in the house. Not sun tanning in the house with a bathing suit. With the air conditioning. With the AC. I hope she catch the flu. Um anyway, ah. anyway, man, so they go out to the club and they are dancing so raunchy. And one chick was like trying to like like one chick is I think she's a lesbian, the black girl. She keeps talking about how she would fuck every girl on the show. It's like, okay, we get it. You obviously are lesbian, right? Um, uh, and then uh, and she goes back and forth to like, I would fuck everybody here. Then, it, then by the end, she's like, I would only mess with one girl here, and it's you. So, it, you know, right, all right, yeah. So the girl that, they went to the club, and this girl, I guess, since she knew she was a lesbian, started dancing real raunchy. And it, it looked like somebody getting a lap dance that didn't want one. Yeah. <laughs> like, she was trying to shrink away, and then the girl's, like, putting her head in her crotch and, like, whipping her hair around all wild. It was like, it was, what are y'all it doing? It was funny, though, because the girl, she stripped. And she was like, I'm a stripper. I've been stripping for six years, and I ain't never seen nothing like that. I yeah. Like, Damn. <laughs> Man, these bitches, you. they went in, dude. It was one of those, like, the only reason y'all didn't get kicked out of this club it's because y'all have cameras, cameras and they know that the, that oxygen is here paying for y'all drinks. If y'all were some regular women dancing like that, they would be like, get the fuck out of here. What are you doing? Yeah. We do not run a brothel here. Yes, because one girl, man, she was dancing. And every time she moved, you kept seeing her draws. Like, that's how, how, how. <laughs> and it was so bad, dudes weren't dancing with them. Damn. Like, that's, like, I've seen, I've been to a bar before where chicks have been questionable behavior. One time I was at Dixie's and this chick was drinking so hard, she literally fell down at the bar, got back up and by the time she got back up 
It was like five dudes around her, like one more sip, <laughs> just one more sip. This yeah, let me help you up. <laughs> you almost at home plate. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, so these chicks are dancing so raunchy. Dudes were just watching them like a ex- exhibition show, and nobody tried to holler at them. They were just like, okay, well. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, don't want to be on camera hollering at that. So when they left, this dude, this random dude was outside. And they was like, of course, they was wilding out. You know, like, woo, yeah, whatever. And this dude just, just like, calm down. <laughs> and this bitch tried to fight him. She was like, yeah. what you say to me? What did you say to me? No, fuck that, son. Fuck that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, she was going to pop off on her, man. On him. Well, um, anyway, man, Bad Girls Club, I'm in. I'm going to have to get on that, man. So I think it kills your brain cells. I, I love it. I love it. I love ignorant people. It makes I me stronger. I can't help, man. I love ignorant ah! I'm into this new thing. I call it ignorance. <laughs> uh, it's, it's like when you combine, you know, nigga shit with ignorance. Which most people will argue is already combined. Because you can't spell ignorant without nigga. But I, I say when well, you take it to the next level of ignorance, yeah, they went to the next level. It's ignorance. Yes, yeah, so this is actually even better in the real world to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because it's yeah. ignorance. There's no rhyme or reason to this shit. There's actually no reason that they're here. Like, okay, I don't know. They don't have jobs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, no, and I guess, <laughs> and I guess is why you had to console me. It was too much. I was like, what's going on here? I don't understand. Like, I remember on the first joint, it was like. You know, oh, you got to get counseling. We're going to help you. You're going to get kicked off the show if you don't get counseling. Mm-hmm. Man, this shit, these bitches are fighting and, like, secur- down, calling yes. security to come in to help. Like, it was like, what are y'all doing? Damn. I am in. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to pop off. So, uh, this dude, J-Dub, at the basketball court, mm-hmm. you know, I, was, I run the list there. It's part of my job. I make sure that the next group of guys who are waiting... You know, you write your name on the list. Make sure that nobody cheats. Because people like to put their name down three, four times. And try to skip people and shit like that. Mark people's name out. So, um, this guy's there. And he basically accused me of cheating him. Because somebody else put my name down. Like, I texted him. was like, hey, I'm coming to the gym. Can y'all just put me down? And I walked in right as the game was starting. So, nobody had taken the ball out. Nothing. The clock hadn't started. And I was just like... Oh, cool, I'm up. And he's like, man, I would have been up if you wouldn't have came. And I was like, yeah, well. But I did. I came. What do you want me to do, right? And he's like, man, see, this is fucked up, man. I, y'all trying me, man, because I ain't from around here. This is white. And it's a white dude um, uh, named J-Dub. And, yes, he goes by J-Dub. He doesn't say Jason Williams or what? <laughs> J-Dub. He's like, he's like, I ain't from around here, man. I know y'all be trying me. I was like, are you serious? Anyway, I just brushed him off, went and played ball. And so later on, he's on the court, and his team is uh, up by one with a few seconds left. The other team scores, it's tied up. And whenever it's a tie game, you have to shoot for the game. Like, you can't play overtime, because that, that can take forever. You shoot for the game, and it's over, right? And so he goes, man, y'all, it ain't tied up, we up one. And I said, what are you talking about, man? You just go shoot for the game. Nah, man, you got the score wrong, man. You trying to cheat me. I was like, I don't even know you, man. And I was like, <laughs> if I fuck the score up in this close-ass game with all these people being upset, somebody got how to you know. the only one that noticed out of 10 people on the court? No. What? Everybody else can't do math? <laughs> Not everybody else listen to Waka Flocka? We all, if we, we all see the score, dog. You're obviously the one that's wrong. Calm down. And so then when, I'm, when he's about to leave or whatever... Uh, you know, I, I'm on the court playing. He's like, he walks up to me. He's like, hey, man, you owe me, man. <laughs> I owe you what? I mean, you owe me for the day. I was like, man, get out of here. And so, like, my thing now is I tell people, beat it. When I don't, I don't feel like discussing it with you, I just go, beat it. So I was like, beat it, little kid. Yeah, beat I, it I tell kids, beat it all the time. Beat it. Get off the court. But, uh, yeah, so dude was trying to argue. I was like, damn, beat it, man. Get out of here. And so the next day, he came in, and, you know, I, I come into work. I had to start this list. But when I walked in, there's like 20 people already in the gym waiting to play. And I am start just writing names down randomly as they walk up to me. Like, okay, here you go. You're on the list. Like, I can't control. I can't stop and be like, okay, everyone line up in the order that they arrived at the gym. <laughs> so, yeah. so I do the, I write down all the names. I get inside the gym, 
and everybody's about to play. I, we, we shoot around for like five, ten minutes, and I'm like, all right, let's start playing. I start calling names out. He comes in, he's like, man, I was here first. I said, you're not even on the list. You weren't even here when <laughs> the first 20 names. people were here. That's right. He's like, man, I was in here, man. I went to work out, came right back. I was like, man, how the fuck is that my fault? That's right. What is wrong with you? You should have kept your ass in there. Yeah, and then he had this look like, you did me wrong again. And I was <laughs> like, if you don't calm your punk ass down, man. Like, So I was like, I was about to play, and I was like, you know what, man? Take my spot. I want you to take my spot because I never want you to bring this shit up again. Not because I did you wrong, but because I don't care that. This is how much I don't care. You can have my spot. I don't give a fuck. I don't care about you enough to do you wrong. I don't even know your real name. So he finally played, and then uh, uh, later on he came up to me and apologized and shit. But I was, I really thought I was going to have to punch a motherfucker into my job. I hope he lost. Yeah, oh, yeah, he lost. Of course he lost. <laughs> But yeah, man, dude was just tripping, man. It's just I don't know, J Dub, you made the podcast. You was tripping, dog. <laughs> um, oh, so we got a couple questions and comments and shit. So let me get into some of that, man. Cool. Uh, you know, people want to know what we got to say about shit. Okay. Nathan Bacon. Um, he's on Twitter as at Nathan Bacon. Yes. He's a funny dude. He's also on Facebook, and he he Facebooks worse than he tweets. Which is uh, way different than most people. Yeah. Most people, they, they, like, the shit they put on Facebook is like, you know, it's a beautiful day. Yeah. My mom is the best. <laughs> Praise Jesus. And then, <laughs> then on Twitter, they'd be on there like, man, I was, so I was eating this pussy the other day. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, so, uh, this dude, though, he's, his Facebook is worse. So, he had a question. He said, hey, next time you talk about porn... Could you find a way to fit in your thoughts on girls who don't fuck black guys because of size and what their families would think, even though they're fucking porn stars? And I don't know if he meant. Oh yeah, he means even though they are fucking porn stars. So I don't mean if he. I don't know if he means even though they're fucking porn stars like that, or he means even though what they do for a living is fuck other porn stars. I don't know. It's kind of vague, but I'm assuming that he means the the first one. So, um, what do y'all think about that? People that, you know, and I, I mean, they extrapolate on the issue a little more. It's not always just these two issues about size and just, uh, their families and shit. Sometimes it's like, uh, money issues. Like, there's women who say, I would make less money if I had sex with black men. I have a part of our, a huge part of my audience that follows me specifically because I don't have sex with interracial, in interracial scenes. Yeah, that's true now. So, what do y'all think about that? The way I look at it is, I ain't mad at nobody for who they choose to fuck and who they don't fuck. I ain't in their bedroom, I, they ain't using my dick, so I know what I like to fuck. <laughs> if you like to fuck something that I don't like to fuck, then I just won't watch it. That's, what, that's, that's my question, like, what is your, what, Karen, you wanna, do you have any opinion on it? <laughs> and my, and my thing, when it comes to it, to me, I, I don't think it really even matters, you know? Yeah. Like, it's weird to me, it's like, that says a lot about your imagination. Because, like, if the if the dude in the porn is the stand-in for you, if that's what you're representing, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, I think most dudes, it, when they watch porn and there's a dude in it, to their mind, that's the stand-in for them. You know what I'm saying? It's, much. It might as well just, it could be a robot, honestly. It's, it really it's just like, for to complete the, it's to complete the set. So like, what so like, is their mind, is their mind so limited that as soon as they see a white dude, they're just like, oh hell no, man, damn, I can't, I want this bitch does look good, and she's the exact perfect kind of woman I would like to have sex with, but she is not fucking a black. <laughs> yeah, dude. what the fuck? Yeah, like how far does that extend? Does it? And is it just race? Like, does his penis got to be the same size and length as yours? Do it got to tur- curve or something? But, but, but you know what? I will say this. I've only watched a couple white pornos. Yeah. And they are very different. White dudes fuck a lot different than black dudes. Yeah, they do, man. They so do. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. I'm just trying to give them some benefit of the doubt. But I mean, some of them do, man. I mean, it probably depends on the site and stuff. Because, like, uh, I ordered some uh, porn from Adam and Eve one uh-huh. time. Um... And, like, you get... Well, actually, you order sex toy through them. But you get free porn. You get free porn. <laughs> like, nobody, hey, nobody turns hey, down free porn. Well, they got to give it away because ain't nobody buying it yeah, anymore. And they, they, and they just right. threw in, like, six random DVDs. <laughs> 
And they're damn near unwatchable because that type of porn doesn't do anything for me. Like, it's the type of chick they have on there not that attractive. Like, last week when I was talking about um, Heather Hunter mm -hmm. and I was saying how I don't find her attractive because she nope. looks like a white girl, what I really mean is she looks like the street, coke whore, no ass type white girl that mm -hmm. is in a lot of porn that I wouldn't watch. Yep. So, you know, she just happened to have a little bit darker skin. Well, in this case, like, all the chicks on this DVD look like that. So, it's not for me. Like, it's just not my type of shit. And then, the talking they do and shit, it's just, it's not, I would never say to, like, suck my cock, bitch. Come on, do it. <laughs> Fuck it. Suck, suck dick. It's like, it's, I would never talk like that. And my thing, some of the time, I'm like, who has sex like this? Who screams yeah. up to the top of their lungs? How's like, they not corny? All sex yeah, really is the best though. sex they ever had. It's very unrealistic. Like, I think if you fucked a girl like that, she would start laughing. <laughs> yeah. She's like, suck my cock, bitch. You got, oh, you like cock, huh? Are you naughty? <laughs> like, I think she would I really be nerd. like, are you serious right now? <laughs> Get from behind me. And then, like, the other thing is, like, um, whenever uh, the, the scenes are going on or whatever, it, it's hard to imagine because they do a lot of acting and shit, and I don't yeah. care no. about their acting. No. Like, no. I don't give a fuck if you a plumber, if you the cable man, if you the landlord. The oh, the damn. Like, I started watching it. It was called Sex Party, right? Which, I guess, is a party where there's going to have to have some sex. And the first the first eight minutes is motherfuckers talking. I was like, what is this? This is like, look at Daphne. Ever since she broke up with Jim, she's been torn apart. What's this, <laughs> like, like, who wrote this shit and why? Why? Who, why didn't you just show up and be like, listen, guys, you're going to be doing some fucking today. <laughs> you can lose the tuxedo. We don't need any of this. See, my favorite type of porn, personally speaking, is when they're in the room and he was like, yeah, we about to fuck, so go yeah. ahead and take that off. Just go ahead and get in the business. I don't need a setup. Right. I don't need a build-up. Uh, the build-up uh, is when she's taking off her damn clothes. I like when Slayer Productions just buys out the mansion for the weekend <laughs> and just flies in porn bitches and have sex for like 40 hours straight and cut it in the scene. Pretty much. I'm like, look. You're going to be outside fucking in the grass. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have a living room. We're going to film all this shit in one time. <laughs> That's we got right. That, we got this mansion for an hour. Then they got to give it back to the bad girls club. So hurry up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way that I would actually need a plot to my shit. So, no. um, but The plot is... Put the dick in the pussy. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Seriously, how is not every scene written the same? <laughs> so he's going to come in. Then you're going to blow him. Then he's going to eat you for a second. And unless it's a black porn, then probably not at all. <laughs> then, then he's going to just have sex with you. And then he's going to come on your face. And that, then, like the only surprise is like, oh, nope, not this time. Come on her ass. All right, let's go. And action. So, um, I like, I've seen this plot line before. <laughs> so, I hate, I, I know I got off on tangent, but, yeah, I don't care about the race stuff or porn. Nope. And, like, I don't understand these dudes, because this happens on Black Girl Online a lot, because it's a forum, and it's where a lot of people get porn, so they, like, chime in and have discussions. And every once in a while, you'll see a thread that's just like, uh, such and such says she, Brandy Taylor says she does not have sex with black men. And then you'll see people actually be outraged, and in their outrage, they are saying very disrespectful stuff like, man, this fucking hoe, who she thinks she is, a fucking slut? Man, that's dumb, this bitch. I'm like, so if you don't think anything of her, why are you, why you so mad? Why you mad? I just give props to the ones that do. Like, hey, Sarah J, she my friend on Twitter, we follow each other, hey, Sarah J. That's all right. You know what I'm saying? I give her props. But if somebody else is like, man, I don't do that shit. I don't want to lose money out of my pockets. Fine. I don't give a fuck. Like, what is she going to do? Cause world peace? Would she get Barack Obama going to get elected a second time? Because <laughs> Olivia Lovely fucked somebody? It's really not that serious. So, I don't know, man. Nathan, I, it doesn't bother me at all. And I actually think it's funny when it does bother people. A little sensitive about your porn, homie. Yeah, man. It's not your dick, man. Honestly. I mean, pretend, but yeah, have some imagination. <laughs> but like, what do you do with when you watch a POV porn? <laughs> Are you really just like looking at the dick, like, man, my dick curves to the right. This is ridiculous. This shit uh, is not realistic. This is unwatchable. Let me go <laughs> holler at my boy Jimmy Palmer. So uh, my man Justin, <laughs> my man Justin wrote the Facebook page and he said, "I know Miami made some nice free agent pickups this summer, and I won't mention who. L. James." But, <laughs> but is anyone <laughs> LeBron James? 
But if any, but is anyone paying attention to the Celtics, the defending Eastern champs, two out of the last three years? They picked up both of the O'Neals. They are getting bigger for the Lakers, and the NBA is still a league where size counts. What are your thoughts on this, O Wise one? Uh, hmm. Um, they picked up Jermaine O'Neal and Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. So. All they really need is like Clint Eastwood, and they can <laughs> they can all go on uh, and get Moses the Moses <laughs> <laughs> They can do one more. They can do one more trip to the moon. You're right. John yeah. Stein. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I, it, you know, it's like they're old, and unfortunately for the Celtics, they're at the point now where I'm like, look. I just need to see y'all get into June before we can have a discussion about y'all. Yeah. Y'all niggas old. Yeah. When KG was hurt two years ago, it was like, all right, well, nice season. <laughs> Congratulations, everybody. Let's wrap this up. Let's get KG some surgery, and we'll try again next year. Then this year, they got there relatively healthy. Kendrick Perkins get hurt. No chance in hell of winning the next two games. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like, y'all are old, and y'all all have to be healthy for me to consider y'all in the finals. That's right. They will probably be able to beat the Cavs if they're healthy. Simply because where they're strong at, the Cavs are... I mean, not Cavs, I'm sorry. The Heat. <laughs> no one cares about the Cavs anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> Don't nobody give a damn. Look, look, look the, the Clippers care. <laughs> <laughs> the Nets care. <laughs> oh, yeah. We gonna yeah. fuck the Cavs up now. Yeah. Come on in, bitch. Remember when you beat us by 40? So, um, I mean the Heat, obviously. Uh... I think they're strong with a heat a week right now. They got a young, great point guard in Rondo. And their center position will be Jermaine O'Neal, uh, Kendrick Perkins, Shaq. Yeah, they will be stronger. Those niggas are old, but they it's about who you got to play against. Old and good, still better than young and sorry. I know like, so. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you right. can be sorry. You can be sorry at any age and be a piece of shit. But a dude that like Shaq. It's like, hey man, I used to be good. I can still give give you a fifteen to ten night. That's right. You ain't never getting that fifteen to ten night out of like Jamal McGlure. That ain't it just ain't coming. It ain't coming. So like best getting something is better than nothing. But I still don't know if that's enough. How often yeah. is Shaq gonna get a fifteen and ten night? Oh, more than you think, man. I, like that's funny. Like it's uh Bomani Jones on the Morning Jones was talking about this today. It's very funny how people perceive Shaq. As washed up, and it's only because he used to be so damn good. Like, that's true. If he was just a dude that averaged what he averaged last year, which is like, uh, I can look it up real quick, but if he actually averaged as many points as he did last year for his whole career, we'd still be like, he was a good player, he's a solid player. But because he used to be like, man, let me give you about 25 and 15 of these things, we'd be like, yo, man, Shaq is the shit. Now we look at him like, all he got was 15 and 10? Shaq the fell off. Some people don't even average that in their career. Yeah. 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 So that um, speaks volumes in itself. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, I think he like to average like, uh, let me see here. Oh, this is totals. Per game, last season, he averaged 12 points and uh, total rebounds, 7 rebounds and 1.5 assists. And he did this in, um, looks like, 23 minutes a game. So now, like, you're not going to get those stats. Yeah, from that's most, solid. That's solid. Any dude that you play 23 minutes a game on your team ain't giving you them stats. Mm -hmm. The real question is, can he come off the bench and, you know, is his ego going to be all right? I don't know. But, um, yeah, Jay, I feel you, dog. I think people sleeping on the Celtics. But it's deserved. It is deserved. These niggas bullshit sometimes. Even last yeah, year, they went, into the, they went into the playoffs with, like, Man, I hope they can get it together. And then they just pulled it together on some old man at the court type shit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know when you can count them out. I mean, pretty much never. But I ain't counting them in either until they show me something. That's right. Well, well they're, they're, like, they're the team that it's like, well, if they make the playoffs, you can't sleep on them because you know they have it in them to fuck it up for you. Even exactly. if they're not ranked high, they can pull some shit together and fuck it up for you and kick you out of the playoffs. But it's just, I don't know, it's... It's not. It doesn't look like an exciting team next year. Yeah, they. I mean, they old man ball. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just get the W. Uh, Philly Cavs fan wrote two notes about the last show, which is called "Run Tell That Homeboy." Um, ignorant rappers. I second the MOP mention, but another rapper I have to nominate is Styles P. 
There are t- there are times when the dude can rhyme about si- about sense. Check the roots rising up, and the thrill is gone from Static Selector. But mostly, all he can talk about is how many ways he can kill you. <laughs> like, <laughs> like how he'll kill the whole team, the coach and the mascot, or how <laughs> how you know uh, he knows you're lactose intolerant, so he'll dip his hollow tips in whole milk before he claps you. <laughs> <laughs> Or how they call him Sub Zero, and ain't no ice in his hand. Be waiting on the roof to drop refrigerators on you and your mans. My, my favorite though is how he'll wild out and throw napkins at you in the middle of traffic. It's ignorance, <laughs> but it's brilliant ignorance. Um, uh, uh, my favorite style, my favorite style P, uh, line is actually in this rap, this freestyle he did on DJ Clue. And he was like, he said something like, I'm the boss of New York. Uh, ask all y'all niggas. Meet y'all in the middle of Times Square and clap all y'all niggas. Like, he's just talking to everybody right there. <laughs> like, there was no specific person or group. He was literally like, you nigga listening to this. Come to Times Square and I will kill you. <laughs> That's how good my rapping is. I will kill you about it. Um, and then he said, buying music, which is the second point. Despite that the previous point, I'm a lot like you two when it comes to hip hop music, with reference to not listening to any rapper who couldn't get a GED, um, which is my new thing. But I try, I'm trying to find one ignorant rapper I can fuck with, and I'm trying hard to make it walk a flocker for right now. But I don't know, man. I can only listen to this hard to paint thing for so long before I get fired from my job. <laughs> <laughs> make you show up late to work and shit like that. Not um, motivated. But there are some artists that I'll go out of my way to buy if I think they're making great music and aren't exactly um, and aren't exactly topping the charts. I won't buy Eminem or Drake's album because they they're going to keep making music with or without my purchase. They can be satisfied with my free download. I've only bought. <laughs> I love how you can decide who you're stealing from. They'll be happy I stole their shit. <laughs> like you doing on my favorite. Yeah, like I steal everybody's shit because I don't play favorites. <laughs> Y'all all need to have your shit stolen. Um, let's see, without a purchase. They can be satisfied with my free download. I've only bought three albums this year. How I Got Over, which is the Roots album, which a lot of people probably bought. So, But he said, I supported my Philly people, the Roots, since Do You Want More. So he just wants all their albums. Okay. Distance relative, Distant Relatives, I never heard of. Mm-hmm. And an album called Never Better from a Minneapolis rock, rapper, punk rocker, called P.O.S. I'll buy songs too, mostly if I'm in a rush and I don't feel like Googling for a free download. I bought an MP3 of a little brother track that I think I that I heard on one of your episodes. Love the show. Hopefully you guys can find some sponsors to make this podcast a profitable venture, a la Keith and the Girl. I hope so too for the cast, yeah. man. And we appreciate your support. We do. And, you know, Keith and the Girl is a podcast that supports themselves. Yeah. And, you know, they're Worldwide, they're huge, and you know, hopefully, uh, one day, you know, we got dreams and shit. You know how it is. Um, and then we had some negative comments, and I love the negative comments. You know what I'm saying? Is this out there? Yeah. Uh, so Mana Hayard. Ooh, what a name. M a n a h y a r d on s o h h dot com. He said, "I tried to give it a chance, bruh, bruh, but it really ain't that funny, informative, or entertaining." Plus, shorty on the mic sound fat and do sound type suspect. Ah, <laughs> he said, Karen is fat and I'm gay. Or at least that's how we sound. Uh-huh. And um, I said, well, I am gay. <laughs> and I do like to eat a lot. And, and um, <laughs> he said, is that... Uh, so uh, then somebody responded back. Uh, when I said I am gay, he was like, are you serious? I know this place got mad undercover homos, but I ain't think niggas really came out of the closet on here. <laughs> and so, Corner Boy, this dude who uh, actually has a podcast that I, I, I love, it's only two episodes in right now, it's called Where's My 40 Acres? And yes, I listen, you listen to, to that. It? It's brilliant. Oh, that's it's, hilarious. Those dudes are so funny, man. Yes, they are. Um, so, uh, he said, uh, bruh, that fat sounding shorty on the mic is his wife. And ah. I think he was trying to say, like, how you gay and he got a wife. Um, and so, uh, the dude, um, the dude responded back, oh, somebody else said, damn, you know, and he responded back, I'm just saying, how you gonna call old boy gay 
and then call Shorty, who's his wife, fat, fat sounding. The reaction you just had was the same one I had when I read his feedback, quote unquote. And uh, some Pac One responded, "Keep doing your thing, Rod. Your podcast keeps me entertained at work all the time, even though I don't comment on them. I'm always waiting for a new one to come out so I can check it. Run till that, homeboy. Thanks, Pat. Uh, we really, I appreciate that. We do. And so the, the hater hit, hit me back, hit me back, and said, "Well, damn, I ain't know Duke was taking L's like that. Y'all can't even front." The bitch was sounding like her lungs was filled with chocolate sauce and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like chocolate a lot. Let me bounce though and leave y'all fed in peace. Keep doing your thing, Big L. Uh, so I, I don't know. So whenever I get negative comments like that, I always find it interesting to just click on their I profile to no. see what the fuck else they talked about. Okay, what else they been talking about? So his favorite thread from the day has been called "I have no use for women outside of sex." Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's he's basically saying that uh, bitches need a man in their life to justify y'all existence. Men don't, but y'all also bleed on yourselves. So I know not to take anything you say seriously. That was deep. Ah, you, know, ah. you don't see scholars like this on the inter- internet enough. <sighs> no nah, man, I, you need to come out with a damn book. And I have no use for women outside of sex. All women are born, bruh. All women's are born. So, to me, the, I'm the homosexual, right? But all women are born. You know what's interesting to me? Pussy. <laughs> just, <laughs> just saying. It's a nice conversation topic. And it, it, it tastes good. Everything's good about it. Um, and I, I don't know what else he talked about. Something about how should we be women who had abortion. Uh... So he said, as a woman who knows how to keep a relationship together, so he says, you know, that's what it's about. Damn. Yeah. He's, this is a guy who goes on the internet and says mean things to people, and that's his life. And so, like I said, with these nerds, this is where they feel control. Yeah. I go to the internet, it, be anonymous, say whatever the fuck I want to, be mean to people, call them fat, call them stupid, whatever, and, you know, I'll get some attention out of it. And hopefully people will argue with me all day. And I'm not doing that. It's no. Like, oh, I'm gay. Okay, I'm gay. Well, next joke, please. You're hilarious. You know? Can't wait to listen to your podcast. Yeah, I'm fat. Give me a piece of chocolate cake, boy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right. Um, so, we got some articles here. Uh, let's do some articles. Okay. Um, Omar Thornton. I killed five ra- the five racists. <laughs> Omar wow. Thornton. Manchester, Connecticut. Family members of Omar Thornton, the man suspected in the Tuesday morning massacre at the Hartford oh. Distributors, was a, say he was a quiet, hardworking man who wasn't a violent person, but he was pushed to the breaking point by harassment at work. Thornton's mother, who lived in East Hartford, said she received a phone call from him shortly after 7 a.m. Tuesday. According to the CBS affiliate WFSB, she says he told her that he had shot several people at the beer distribution plant where he worked and that he planned to take his own life. She said he. She said she spent ten minutes trying to talk to her son, pleading with him to change her, his mind, but she said she couldn't. Minutes later, Thornton was dead. He said, "I killed the five racists that were bothering me." Said Will Holiday, Thornton's uncle. He said, "That's it. The cops are going to come in, so I'm going to take care of it myself." Holiday said Thornton had been complaining to relatives that in the several years he had worked at the Harvard Distributors, he was confronted with blatant racism. Uh, Holiday said that he had some instances of racism at the company, but they were hanging nooses in the bathroom and writing stuff like that. They were singling him out because he's the only black person there in that area. So much for affirmative action. Ain't nobody ever heard of quitting and going to the damn job? I don't know, man. I think I prefer killing the killing all the white folks. No, it don't work like that. It's too many. Not all of them. It's the bad ones. Y'all need the good ones. Oh yeah, that's true. There was, yeah, there's no lesson to be learned. You kill all the white folks, so you just kill the most racist ones, and you let it be a warning to the other ones. Gotta make an example out of somebody. Yeah, and obviously their family members will stop being racist because even though a nigga it works killed every them, time, a nigga killed my daddy, but it was because he was racist. So <laughs> I'm not racist anymore. Did I say nigga? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of my best niggas are black. Oh, I'm sorry, my friends are niggas. Ah, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thornton family said he had taken pictures of the threats and said they believe he just snapped Tuesday morning. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, he, they said he expressed condolences to the families of the victims, but they said they were mourning too. 
Um, this all could have been avoided, Holiday said. He went to the union a couple of times with the issues concerning what was going on. It was not dealt with appropriately. Thornton had been caught on videotape stealing beer from the Hartford distributors and was supposed to meet with company officials when the shootings began. So this nigga was stealing beer. Yeah. About to lose his job. Yeah. Maybe the racism, they was like, well, you do fit some of the stereotypes. Yeah. Niggas do steal. And they like beer. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, they weren't 40s. They were just regular beers. Oh, I'm sorry. I think. Was he eating chicken with that beer? <laughs> <laughs> he was caught on tape eating watermelon and stealing beer. Um. Yeah, listening to Luda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was dancing. Uh. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with race, Rue said. This is a disgruntled employee who shot a bunch of people. Well, that's a, why is there so many extremes in this article? Listen, it does have something to do with race. And yes, he's a fucking thief. Why can't it be both? Like, hanging nooses is racial. Yes, what the is. fuck? How is that? It has nothing to do with races. We well, Listen, it's not about race. We're just saying niggas need to know their place. Why is everyone so upset? And you know, he was probably like, well, these motherfuckers hanging nooses. I'm going to get mine. Let me get a couple <laughs> cases of this beer. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder which Fuck came first. Crappies. Like, was it, the, <laughs> was it the harassment that came first or the stealing? Because I would like to know. Maybe, because it could be that he was stealing and then there was like, that nigga. Oh my, we let one in. And then the racism came out or it could have been. I, it was, think, I think the racism came first. Because in there, I don't know if it says later on, but they said they called him in the office. They told him, look, either you can quit or you can resign. Or I don't know, you can either resign or you can be fired. This motherfucker was like, I got another idea. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, if you come into the meeting yeah. with the gun, it's not like he left and came back to get the right. gun. Oh, he yeah. killed these motherfuckers. He had the gun with him. He was planning to kill these motherfuckers all along. Yeah, that's true. So, what kind of my thing is, is at the beer place. I mean, shit, money is much. Don't have. Yeah, your job ain't got that. Nobody yeah, got that kind of security. Smuggle a gun. They said he brought it in. And his the old ass nigga that's supposed to protect me and my job, man. I seen him today. Took him like three minutes to get out of his car from lunch. Yeah, man. No way is he gonna save my There's life. An old nigga walking with a limp. In my yeah, they <laughs> started shooting, man. We all dead. Survivor yeah. of the fittest, nigga. I mean, he brought the gun in in his lunchbox. I mean, ain't nobody checking lunchboxes on the way into work. So. Thornton's so. ex girlfriend spoke to WFSB. And said he never, he's never been violent that I know of. Uh, she told the affiliate, I don't know what happened inside of him. Something snapped inside his head. Um, they said Thornton entered the business with a rifle and a red satchel filled with ammunition. Authorities say the shooter killed eight employees, injured two others before committing suicide. So he got the racist and some more. He's like, I'm going for five and a possible. <laughs> he was just capping everybody's ass, dude. Yeah, oh man, that shit was crazy. Yeah, that's kind of sad. Hey, you know, you know what? The shit that's funny. Every time I see one of these shits, every time I watch a news article about that, they go to his Facebook page. Like, yeah. like looking at his Facebook page is gonna add so much depth and insight to to the mind of a killer. It's like you really get to know him when you see pictures of him drinking beer with his buddies. And this shit, it's not like it's, it, I think his Facebook page is private because <laughs> all you see is the main page. You don't even go into the pictures of that. And like, what do you think you're going to find? A Facebook page full of them like playing, holding up plans or like, <laughs> I'm going to kill him first. This is the list. And I have a video of me practicing walking through the the, the store. Like, and they're always like, they keep on saying, "Well, you know what, Walton Guns or whoever it was, yeah. that was that was a thing of interest for him." So there's right. a lot of motherfuckers out there that have guns as interest. That don't mean I'm gonna go out there and shoot motherfuckers up just because I'm interested in guns. Yeah, it's ridiculous, dude. Uh, Facebook is getting ridiculous. Uh, speaking of porn, what's the weirdest porn y'all ever seen? Um, I had to think about that one. Alright, think on that one. Um, I can't. I was. I can't remember what brought this up. I was thinking about. I think I was watching the scene or something, and then something else happened. I think. Oh, I was watching amateur porn because I like the amateur I stuff. Love amateur porn. Yeah, it's way better. It might be hilarious. It might be disturbing. This is like a roll of the dice. You never know what you're gonna see. It might just be boring, but it's real, and that's what matters. So I, was, I remember the worst one. I, I was watching this porn and. It was this white lady about to have sex with this black dude. And I was like, all right, I'm in. Let's go. And it became apparent through the audio that the husband was filming it. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. What is going on here? Then, a couple minutes later, 
couple more black dudes came through. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And so, all these black dudes had sex with this woman. Just like, sex, just busting off in her. No condoms anywhere, I guess. Oh. HIV must not have been around. I don't know. It looked like some old footage. And then, the, the end of the scene, the white dude filmed himself eating up the juices. Oh. Oh. oh! Yes. Damn. And I was like, like the third time I masturbated to it, I was like, this is sick! <laughs> this is enough! Oh. Whose fantasy is this? Like, who's, oh, no. how is it that dude's fantasy? Like, I, I even, first of all, discuss that everybody involved. Obviously, yeah. right? Oh, I don't want to be. Well, no, no, I don't want to be the no, third brother. No, no, the first dude who hit it. That's all right. It's the way they was doing it, though. It wasn't no clean like, let me get my turn first, then y'all can get in. It was like, let me get my turn for four minutes. All right, next dude, right, I'll come back at the end of the line. I can't no, stand that shit, man. This no, is that is whose fantasy is this? Like anyway, so they, and they were just and then like, how you gonna let somebody come inside of somebody? And then you stick your dick in there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's already lubed up. Mm-hmm. So that was probably the weirdest one. I saw that and I was, it was, I was disgusted. No, I personally can't stand no porn that had more than one dude in them. Yes, yeah, seriously. No. <laughs> one dick for fantasy, please. No. You know, yeah, all the chicks you want, but yeah. I don't want, even if they fucking different chicks. Yeah. No, man, I don't want to be naked in the room. Plus, I, <laughs> I started noticing shit that I shouldn't notice. Like, if it's two dudes fucking two chicks. I be noticing when they switch. I'm like, wait a minute, he was on the. F- I thought he was doing a light skin chick. Wait a minute, let me rewind. Is that- oh man, they switched chicks. They didn't even say nothing to each other. Like it's just like I oh, don't know. It's just weird, man. And then the other thing is, if it's two dudes and two chicks, but both dudes have sex with one chick at the same time, like, and it's just and another the other chick, chick in the room. Just sitting there, like, yeah, let me rub my titties. <laughs> like, what? Who? Who is this? <laughs> No dude had that fantasy of like, I have my own chick to myself, right? But then I was like, let me get some of yours, dog. Leave while mine you, over here by while myself. You still in it. Yeah. And then the, it's never the other dude's fantasy. He's like, yeah, man, he was having sex with another chick on the other side of the room. But then I was like, I was like yo, homie. It's some come, extra hoes over here. Come hit this with me. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to leave these hoes out. You just expected me and my lady. So, Come and get this ass while I'm getting the pussy. Yeah, that's oh, the worst too. Oh, the DP. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh man, that should be in the description of the no. porno too. Can <laughs> we please? You should never load up upload, whoever loading up porno to Pornhub. Can we please put that shit in the description at the beginning? I like to know what I'm getting into. I don't like surprises in my porn. I need to know if these dudes are about to double up on the chick at the same no, time. No, really? Balls touching each other. And I know, shit. right? That is oh. the nastiest shit, man. Yeah. There's no, there's a dude face inches away from your fucking face. <laughs> what is, what is attractive about that, man? There's nothing. Oh man. I saw his sweat go drip off. Oh, oh. to the sweat just from my balls. <laughs> Onto your balls. <laughs> oh, ski ski, motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> you all ski and shoot some yeah, on your nose. Yeah, that's how, maybe that's how I got, <laughs> that, that, that song got started. Oh, oh ski ski, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got mad. So, um, alright, man, um, I already talked about ignorance, and as an example of ignorance, I was like, uh, if you watch Inception and you say it like, I ain't understand Inception, if he was having dreams, then where was all the bitches at? <laughs> That's ignorance. you see what I'm saying? That is. That's worse than just walking out. Oh, Patrice also told me, Patrice C on Twitter, you can follow all lowercase, Patrice C, one word, um, she said that uh, Jennifer Hudson did lose weight, mm-hmm. and she sent me a link to a picture, yes. which is a much, much better advertisement yes. than the shit on Weight Watchers. Yes, where did they shoot that? I don't. It's like they was they had everything on there that <laughs> women use on MySpace to make you think that you're about to date a hot chick. Dark Floyd clothes. Yes. The super close head shot. Yes. yes. Dude, it was. And it's they showed sad. those pictures. I mean, she's like a size six now. Damn. Yeah, like she lost a lot of weight, yes, but did. your ad makes you think you're lying to me. Maybe they did it before she lost weight. Then I was like, all right, now you know by the time we come out with the print ad, you got to really lose it. Um, let's see. At what point does a fight in prison turn into a rape? <laughs> like I was thinking about, like I was watching the clip of, uh, I think his name was Fleece Johnson, the the dude that they made the Boondocks about, mm-hmm. the one that's like, uh, I call him Chris Handsome. That dude. Yeah. I watched his clip again on YouTube, and it's it's obviously very disturbing. 
Um, but he was talking about raping dudes and all this shit. And he told him, you can do this the easy way or the hard way. And when men be sagging in prison and these young boys don't know that that's turning me on. Okay, you showing your butt and everything. You know, Aww. so I was thinking, though, like, in prison, people talk about you got to get in fights all the time and all this shit. Like, how, do you know before the fight that which one's a fight fight? And which one is a fight for your for your man for your virgin, virginity? Like, <laughs> like, but is that like a distinct? Like, do they always walk up and be like, "Now this is for the rape now." You know, <laughs> like, you know, we just scrapping this time. Yeah, no, no, I'm just gonna shank you. I'm gonna shank you. No, next with time, a with a with I'm a knife. Fuck your ass. Yeah, next time shank it with my penis. Like, I I wonder uh-huh. if there's a because I was like, it would be the worst feeling in the world to lose a fight for one. But then when the rape starts, like, oh man. It's one of these. <laughs> I thought this was a regular fight. I would have fought harder and dirtier. I think you have to assume every, every fight in prison is oh, an ass fight. Yeah, I, I don't want to go to people like prison ain't tough enough. No, ain't no rape is pretty tough. Yeah, pretty tough. Uh, you can keep the cable vision. Yeah. All right, just, just <laughs> save the rape. You gotta have something to watch while your asshole is healing. Speaking of rape, I watched this movie called The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think it's a, like a Swedish film or something like that. It's a foreign film. And they're supposed to be remaking it for American audiences or whatever. Man, this film was so good. It's dark. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like violent, but not, I wouldn't say like, it's it's not for sensitive people, but it's not gross violent. It's not like, okay. ooh, all I feel out his head. It's not that kind of violence. Yeah. It's, but it's very psychologically violent. And the original title was actually something like, uh, men who do bad things to women or something like that. Like, that was a literal title and they changed it, thank God, to the girl with the dragon tattoo. But it's a, it's like a mystery and a newspaper journalist and this lady who does, uh, who's like a private eye, pretty much. They are the people who are unraveling this murder mystery and it's so good. It's about two and a half hours long, but it's on Netflix streaming. So I watched it like 40 minutes here, 30 minutes there until it's done. But it, the pacing is great. The way they do their research and the way you're finding out like little clues and starting to put things together. And then like the last 30 minutes is just like, bam, like just the, the action picks up and it's just going right in. And you're like racing against time. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, I was on like Netflix streaming or something? Yeah, Netflix streaming. Just the girl with the dragon tattoo, so you can watch it on your laptop, watch it on your Xbox. What's that on? Drama, um, action? Uh, that one would be under probably mystery, uh, murder mystery, or thriller, thriller probably. Okay. But it was it was one. great, man. It's got subtitles, obviously, but you know, I know some niggas don't like reading, but I I read it. You know, I might not read the books on the series, but I definitely read some subtitles. So I loved it. Um, and uh, let's go. On, let's do some more articles. All right. Gettysburg man accused of squirting semen from bottle on women. Damn. Oh, <laughs> face bitch. <laughs> a Gettysburg man accused of squirting semen from a bottle on a grocery shopper last month was arrested this week in a similar case and may have done the same thing at least twice before. Damn. I think every time he squirted, he had to take a little nap afterwards. <laughs> oh, oh, I need a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> Um, <laughs> on July 15th at a giant food store in Gaithersburg, police said a man discharged fluid from a small bottle similar to those used to hold hand sanitizer and then snapped a photo of this act with his cell phone. <laughs> so he was literally taking cum shots. Pretty much. Yes. The victim saved her unwashed skirt, shirt and skirt, providing investigators with a possible DNA sample. This is Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, do you think that's? Do you think that is a, a very hard story to sell to the police? Like she shows up in a mini skirt and a shirt, and she's like, "Listen, this man squirted cum on me out of a bottle." I'm like, sure he did, honey. <laughs> okay, out of a, a bottle. bottle. Yeah, sure he did. <laughs> Was that bottle about eight inches long? <laughs> how much did he charge? <laughs> and I, um, now my, my question is that how did he get it into the bottle? Well, that's pretty obvious. Mm. I say it came out of his penis first, oh. <laughs> unless it was somebody else's. I mean, spur. Is he stupid? <laughs> Did he like? Oh, I don't know. Oh. He hollering at the chick from that porno, that porno you're talking about. All the dudes, the juice. Oh yeah, he was there. Yeah, he. Well, obviously he let a bunch of niggas fuck his wife. 
then he just sucked he just it out it up. and just push it into the bottle. Uh, uh, you know, like how else would you get it in there? Suck and spit, dog. Suck and spit. Oh man. Um, Gaithersburg police. Oh, Michael Wayne Edwards, 28, has been charged in Michael Wayne Edwards Jr. You know, I feel bad for in this story. Michael Wayne Edwards <laughs> Senior. Yeah. Well, you know, he's like, like, boy. <laughs> it's a nigga at work right now. Like, God damn. <laughs> Damn, son. <laughs> How's Junior doing? Ah, oh, not good. Has been charged in the incident in another at at a Michael's craft store. So he was just hanging out wherever the women was at, grocery store, craft store. Aww. Also in Gaithersburg, police said that after questioning Edwards, they're looking for at least two more victims. So he gave up all this. Yeah. He was like, "Yeah, I did it twice again." Uh, police asked anyone who noticed an unusual substance on their clothes, but wrote it off as benign. <laughs> I thought this was cream sauce. <laughs> no one would ever. No one would ever no one think. think of that. That's what he just said. No one would ever think someone would do this. Said Officer Dan Lane. Edwards, who is free on bond, is scheduled for two trials on assault in September. He could not be reached for a comment. Uh, police say officers were called to the giant on Muddy Branch Road July 15th after a woman said she felt something in her hair Damn. as she was walking out of the store. She said she asked the man behind her if, she, if he felt a drip from above, but the man acted like he didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> According to an arrest affidavit filed in court. In the parking lot, the woman asked a friend who took to look at her clothes. Her friend said it looked like semen. Mm. So her friend was a hoe. <laughs> yeah, I would not think that yeah. would be the first thing. Like, you think her friend was like, come here, let me smell your hair. Mmm, semen. <laughs> About 28. <laughs> Michael Wayne Edwards Jr. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Good Tastes like man. nutmeg. Little cinnamon. Does he eat yogurt? <laughs> um, see, in the parking lot, oh wait, Detective Patrick Ward examined surveillance video and saw the suspect purchase grocery using the store his store bonus card. Dumbass. In the doorway, the man can be seen squirting fluid from a bottle and taking the picture. Police identify Edwards through his bonus card in the surveillance video. Forensic tests confirm the substance is semen. DNA tests are pending. Montgomery County Detective Scott Brooks have been investigating the Michaels case since November. <laughs> so this dude was on the case of the semen bandit for, <laughs> for like a year. What did you guys to do to get screwed up to get on that case? Any breaks in the case? Not yet. But I'm gonna have to wait for him to strike again. I got all this semen to, to, to <laughs> muddle through. You think dude was like writing letters to the cops like serial killers and shit? <laughs> well, cops, too slow this time. I struck again. <laughs> Mail me three million dollars or somebody else gets semen in their hair. <laughs> uh, Montgomery County Detective Scott Brooks has been invading the killer. Uh, a shopper said a man followed her into the store. After he, wa- she, he walked by, she felt liquid on the back of her sweater. She looked and thought it was semen. So, it must have been that girl's friend. Man. I don't know if, if like, I got liquid on me. And I see semen all the time, obviously, because it comes out of me. But... When, like, I won't know that if, like, semen, like, say it landed on my basketball shorts during the basketball game. I don't think, I don't think the first thing I would think is, hmm, semen. <laughs> I don't think that would be the first thing is I would think. jizz on my leg? Yes. This is obviously jizz on my pants. It's be, not mine. I'd be a bad victim. I'll just wash my clothes and keep it pushing. Yeah, well, yeah, obviously he's one more disgusted. A woman sends out nude photo stars tripping over a mistake. Shalimar, I guess that's where it happened, not the not the group. A woman who said she accidentally sent out a photo of her vagina in a chat room started tripping, bit her boyfriend, and then knifed him, according to her Okaloosa County, County Sheriff's <laughs> Office arrest report. I don't understand that first sentence I just I read. I don't either. A woman who said she accidentally sent out a photo of her vagina in a chat room started tripping. Bit her boyfriend and then knifed him. No, I read it right. It's just crazy. Yeah, that shit doesn't make sense. Ah. Kizzy LaFay Campbell, who is 31, was charged with battery and aggravated battery and using a deadly weapon. Her boyfriend told deputies that he came home on March 21st and found out that his girlfriend had multiple internet chat messages from other dudes. 
He checked the messages and found that they were provocative, so he looked out the outgoing messages. Then, that's when he discovered the one of her vagina. When he confronted her, she said he, he said she started tripping and said that she hadn't meant to send out that photo. Yeah, Word. right. Word. Yeah, right. Multiple chat rooms. Yeah, yeah right. Like, let, me, let me just send the one of my smiling face. Oops, my bad. I <laughs> accidentally sent my snatch. We need to get the semen detective on this one. Oh, he'll be all on that one. Yeah, because I think his name was Detective Patrick. Word. <laughs> Word, <laughs> bitch. Um, he, he told the deputy that she persuaded him it was just an accident and he was trying to be understanding. When he tried to hug her, she bit him in the shoulder, scratched him, grabbed a large kitchen knife, which she used to cut his arm. I'm going to tell you something, Damn. y'all. Uh, first this of nigga lying. I'm going to tell you right now. You ain't got to call Horatio for this one. No. He wasn't trying to hug her. He was probably going to chuck the shit out of her. It's like, I just want to hug you, bitch. Hug you with this pillow over your face. And then she was like, bit him and then cut him. It was like, get off of me. I like sending my pussy to other people. Calm down. But yeah, she definitely was cheating. He had a large bloody bite mark, bite mark on his shoulder, multiple scratches, and a small laceration on his left arm. The two had been living together for seven years. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So the first sentence said that she stabbed him. Yeah. But now it's a small laceration. So I guess a paper cut is the same thing as getting stabbed. Well, you got to remember, man. They've been together seven years. All it's I'm the seven-year itch, so she had to scratch it. All I'm saying is, if you're going to ah. say somebody stabbed somebody... Make sure the knife goes into the flesh, not just mm. grazes over the flesh. That's yeah. not stabbing. That's 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 gently nicking nicking somebody with a knife. Campbell told deputies that she did bite her boyfriend, but they were just playing. She is due to appear in court May fourth. She in the semester and them type shit. Now we was just playing. I mean, <laughs> I stabbed him a little bit and <laughs> beat him on his neck, and he tried to hug me to death. We just fucking around, y'all. I mean, y'all don't understand our relationship. It's a little bit yeah. of hood involved. I have a folder full of pussy pictures that I take for myself, <laughs> not to send to people. It's an accident they ever go out to anybody. But I have a photo full of pussy pictures, and I meant to send out the pictures of my Hello Kitty collection, <laughs> but both of the photos are named Hello Kitty. I couldn't... <laughs> both of them have kitties in them. Um, two arrested in motorcycle theft after returning to scene. Uh, the, <laughs> Sullivan County Sheriff Department reports two men have been arrested for stealing a motorcycle after they returned to the scene of the crime. Sullivan County Sheriff Department has the same sentence. Why did you start it with the same sentence? According to the police report, a neighbor of the victim told deputies he saw two men break into her garage. Oh, she told. She saw two men break into her garage. But uh, for the record, I want y'all to know I didn't read this wrong. He saw two men break into her garage. Yeah, so, somebody else saw somebody two else? men okay. breaking her garage. So, all right, the neighbor saw two no. men break into a woman's okay. garage. Rolled the motorcycle down the road and loaded it onto the back of a truck. Strangely enough, the two men returned to the victim's home shortly after <laughs> and were there when the police arrived to take down the report. An eyewitness confirmed the maroon F-150 pickup truck had the same tag number in the pickup truck that took the motorcycles loaded into. <sighs> Cody Addison, 19, and Dustin Clayback Barger, 18, both of Bluntville, were they probably were blunted, were arrested and charged with burglary and theft. Addison was additionally charged with civil possession for having appeared to be uh, for what have, having what appeared to be marijuana in his pockets. Both men are being held on ten thousand dollars bond. The motorcycle was recovered. So, of course, it was. It is stupid. Yeah, let's steal something and come back. Like, like they were just like. Doing it in moderation. Yeah. You don't just steal everything at once. Get a little bit here, a little bit there. Wait till the next day after the cops leave. Yeah. Shit. Police. Naked man refused to leave Indigo Room. I, I love the picture of this dude. He looks like he's singing a song, and they snapped the picture right in the middle of him singing. Ah! Oh damn. Yeah, it's like he's singing uh, "Hide Your Kids." He's singing "Hide Your Heart" too, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's singing some Brian McKnight. A man, yeah, a man was a. <laughs> A man was arrested for stripping naked in the middle of the Indigo Room and refusing to leave. The bartender manager of the Indigo Room called Fort Myers Police uh, because a patron, later in, in the, identified as Irving Edwin Howard, was causing a disturbance in the bar. The bartender told Officer Howard, told the officer Howard came into the bar without shoes, so he asked Howard to leave. Howard refused to leave and began taking off all his clothes. 
Once he was naked, he went into the women's restroom. Damn. Mm, he was looking for some sex. Oh, yeah. The officer went to the door of the women's restroom and asked Howard to come out. Howard walked into the view, interview but refused to turn around and put his hands behind his back. Instead, Howard began screaming and ran towards the officer with his hands clenched in the fist, the officer said. The officer used his taser. Yes! Used his taser on Howard. Take him down. And he fell onto the ground. Howard attempted to get off the floor and the officer used his taser again. Yes! With the assistance of another officer. Two for one. How Howard was handcuffed and taken into custody. He was charged with indecent exposure, exposure, disorderly conduct, resisting the officer without violence, and trespassing. So, I don't even What is the indigo room? I wonder. I don't know. It's like a strip club? Or That's what it sounds like. So. Yeah, he was stripping all right. Yes, like, he was. I need a job, damn it. You don't have any shoes. That's what I'm saying. I can't even afford shoes. Listen, look at my skills. I'll take this off right now. Is there some women in here in the restroom? Uh, man charged by police and roommate stabbing. And this nigga looks stabby. Look at this dude. Ooh. Like, if you... Who was his roommate? Like, when he was like, yeah, man, we should move in together. He didn't look at you and go, no, you would stab like me. He just got out of bed, too. Yeah, you look like the stabbing kind of person. Ah. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. A Myrtle Beach man has been charged at the police say he was he stabbed his roommate on Thursday. According to a report, the Myrtle Beach police say the 58-year-old victim was attacked. You 58 and you got a roommate. 58-year-old victim was attacked. Your life ain't going good. You know what I'm saying? You did something wrong. You made yeah. a wrong turn somewhere. Yeah, you fucked up. A uh, 58-year-old victim was attacked after asking his roommate to quiet down while engaging in sexual activity with a woman. Oh, so he, he was hating, man. He was fucking up. And the dude was probably outside like, Hey, dog, when am I going to get some? Hey, cuz. Ain't no fun in home stand, huh? He's like, man, can you just shut up? And he's like, oh, no, I'm stabbing you. Fuck that. No, it sounded like he was hating because the roommate was fucking loud. And he's like, man, can you cut all that fucking out? Oh, he asked his roommate to quiet down. Yeah. So his roommate was having some sex and it was loud. Yeah. Now, I have been in, when I was lived in a dorm, I have been in my dorm room with not next door neighbors. I don't know if they were filled with porno or what, but this dude was fucking this bitch. It was so loud. It was obscenely loud. Yeah. I mean, it didn't. I didn't tell him to quiet down. No. <laughs> I was just jacked I was, off. Yeah, I was like, "Whoa, no one's here." <laughs> Turn the lights down, though. <laughs> Put on some soft music. Yeah. I called him. I called his room. I was like, "Slow down, bro. Slow down." <laughs> Not going anywhere. I'm um, done yet. <laughs> yeah. Are you? Is y'all done already? Damn. After telling his roommate he was sick of hearing the noise, police said his roommate jumped out of bed and began stabbing. The 40, 58 year old what in the hand with the knife. Yeah, they. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> he, he jumped got out of his bed. He jumped out some pussy to stab him. Gosh. <laughs> that pussy couldn't have been that good. <laughs> then he jumped back in the pussy. Yeah, he's like, oh, uh, take these, nigga. Anyway. <laughs> so he, um. He's like, I can't concentrate. <laughs> I can't get hard. It's not, this, this normally doesn't happen. Hold on, I'll be right back. So the man ran out of the apartment to alerted neighbors that he had been injured. The victim sustained stab wounds to his left hand as a result of the altercation. The, the man's roommate later identified as Russell Willis Shepard Jr., 40, of Myrtle Beach, has since been charged with a second degree assault and battery and transported to Myrtle Beach Shell. Damn. Wow. Bestiality news. Yay! Oh, Guilty wow. plea in dog sex photo shop swap. Talk about setting a bad example. A spat between Utah parents split their daughters who had been friends. The things got really then things got really weird. Police say Donette Stark, 37, manipulated a photo so it looked like her daughter's former friend was having sex with the dog. Then passed the image out of the girls' school. Damn. She took it too wow. far. When keeping it real goes wrong. Real wrong. She has pleaded guilty to three counts of sexual exploitation of a minor. She didn't realize this is probably going to get you some federal yeah. time. Really, though. Like, this is not a funny joke. I, kn I don't know what's more embarrassing, the crime or the fact that she appears to have been arrested in a Twilight t-shirt. <laughs> See her up close in the weird crime mugshot hall of shame. So, yeah. Damn. Uh, fast food wow. frenzy. Wendy's staff attacked with stun gun. Uh-oh. The criminals are starting to get hold of the stun gun. Yeah. Although... Still better than getting shot. Yep. Still better than getting I'm shot. Take votes than lead. It's a nigga at Wendy's right now. It's, they came back to work today because you know they ain't giving them no day off. Yep. They came back to work today and it's like all I got is these stun burns. 
An irate diner allegedly attacked workers in the Daytona, Florida Beach, Florida. Of course, Florida. Wendy's with a stun gun on Monday morning because she didn't receive the condiment she wanted. Damn. That is a picky motherfucker. I said, honey, no, you, you know what? You know what? You'll get the honey mustard next time. <laughs> <laughs> Police say the fast food fiasco began around 10, p- 10 a.m. in the Melanie's Reed. 10 a.m.? What is that, breakfast? <laughs> they don't even serve breakfast in Wendy's. I think that's when they start serving lunch. I, I worked the there before. I thought we didn't start till like 11. 10, 30, 11. Maybe it was 10, but damn. Ooh, that's she, she was the first customer in there. Yes, yeah, she was. Melanie's was Reed, 20, and Katrina Bryant, 23, complained that they weren't giving packets of mayonnaise and mustard in the drive through order. Masterminds need not apply. Um, Katrina Bryant left and Melanie's Reed, right? Were happy when workers at a Wendy's in, weren't happy when workers at a Wendy's in the town of Beach, Florida, didn't give them packets of mayonnaise and mustard. So Reed allegedly ran into the fast food joint and chased the workers with a taser. Damn! I right. didn't ask for some. I mean, come on. The pair reportedly hurled obscenities at the Wendy's worker Jason Hill, who said the duo were acting childish, according to the Sun Sentinel. It was just, you know, what's funny is. And it's a minimum wage thing. When you make a minimum wage, you do not care about the job. It's no. just it's natural. No. But it's so funny that he couldn't help but be like, y'all acting childish. <laughs> These bitches chasing you with a taser. It's time to cut this sarcasm. No, hey, look, look, I'm sorry. Look, you want extra, you want yeah. extra mayonnaise? He's still getting snarky and they about to hit him I'm with like, some hot votes. You want the whole bucket? I get a whole bucket. We get your back. Yeah. Uh, I was working at a McDonald's once when I was 15 and they ran out of ketchup. And you do not realize how a little thing like running out of ketchup can cause grown ass adults to yeah, lose their bit. fucking mind. Look, cursing me out. One dude threw his food back at the, our manager. Like the manager was like, "Oh, we're out of ketchup." He's like, "You got no ketchup? Well, you don't got no ketchup? Like, why they gotta ask again? I don't know." <laughs> He's like, "No, sir, we uh, we're out of ketchup." He's like. No, who the fuck want to order ketchup without no fries or no ketchup? He just threw his bag of food back at the manager. I was like, this well, shit. Well, you already crazy. paid for that shit, so. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, I want my money back. Like, well, pick up all the fries off the floor. Yes. But, um, yeah, of course he gave his money back, though. Um, it was a bunch of foul language. F you this, F this, that kind of situation. Employee Rob Van Chow told WFTV, we're all like, back off. Get out of here. Then they reached in and started slapping people. <laughs> <laughs> These chicks was, they must have been on their way down to the bad girls club. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. That was from early in the morning. That's when Reeve reportedly got out of the car, entered the restaurant, and chased Hill with a stun gun. She walked in with a taser, and she was pressing it like zzz, zzz. And then she walked in the Wendy's and came in the back and tried to ch- tase Jason. Jason, it was crazy, said the employee Malcolm Nelson. Hill fled from the eatery and Reed reportedly returned to her PT Cruiser after the restaurant manager. I hate PT Cruisers. After the I restaurant manager you. threatened to call police. Officers eventually nabbed the suspects about a mile away from the eatery, but not before the woman identified herself as Bryant. Identify herself as Brian, called the restaurant complaining about poor service and claiming her ap- accomplice was forced to use a sun gun in self defense. Reed was charged with the yeah, aggravated right. assault with a deadly weapon. All those damn weapon. cameras they have around. Now, restaurants. this is my thing, right? Mm-hmm. So, they got the stun gun. They don't have the kind like the cops have that can shoot a projectile. Yeah. They got the kind where you got to get close yeah. and shit. Yeah. Yeah. If I see a bitch pulling out a stun gun, chasing Kick her, her in around, her chest. Boy, I'm, I'm about to pull out the broom handle. I'm about to pull out some tall, some There's stuff. knives in Wendy's. Yeah. Knives in Wendy's. Yeah, I'm like, all right, come bring your ass over here. Nah, you, know? you want some condiments? Come in this, bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh... It's not Lawrence Fishburne's fault that his daughter does porn. When news hit the internet last week that Fishburne's daughter, Montana Fishburne, is now doing her own thing and starring in porn flicks, people immediately began to point the finger at her father. Bossup.com entitled their post about Montana, Where Are the Parents? The popular gossip and humor blog, Oh Hell No, said, Dear Lawrence Fishburne, Fatherhood Fail. Um, and many other people I follow on Twitter were quick to point the finger at Lawrence Fishburne. They cited the old Chris Rock joke about the father's one responsibility to his daughters to keep her off the stripper pole. And in this case, what Lawrence did was far worse. Forget a pole, he couldn't keep his daughter off the tape. Oh. See, the better joke there would be, he couldn't keep her off 
forget a stripper pole, he couldn't keep her off of men poles. Mm. That's what I would have said. And all hell no, that's where we get our sources from now. But my thing is, it's not really fair to blame Lawrence, and honestly, no, it's too she's easy. A grown woman. Without knowing anything about the ins and out of the Fishburne family, how can we be sure Lawrence Fishburne wasn't a good father, or didn't do his best? While certainly this best wasn't good enough, obviously, he says that. He, to say he failed at raising his daughter is to suggest he didn't even put forth any sort of effort to raise her. I may not know any more than the next casual pop culture observer, but I'm pretty sure Montana Fishburne wasn't neglected. How can you be pretty sure of that? <coughs> uh, at some point, we all have to accept the fact that people make bad decisions and made them on their own. Yes, and it's not with assistance or negative influences. I'm not sure Montana Fishburne didn't have a rough childhood. As a matter of fact, I'll continue to say I don't know if she did or did not, but I do. Uh, when she explained the reason why she chose uh, the tape, she certainly didn't name drop her father. She name dropped another celebrity, Kim Kardashian. Um, you know what's funny is I saw another picture that showed her with her boyfriend, and people are saying that it's her boyfriend that's pimping her uh, into this industry and all this stuff. Um, all I'm going to say is this. Fatherhood sometimes is a pass fail. And when your daughter's doing porn, fail. Now you can have reasons why you fail, and maybe the reason ain't got that much to do with you, but at some point you gotta turn decline that matrix too and go get your daughter out of boarding school or something. True. And on top of that, and and, now, and the thing about it though is that when it comes to, and I don't have any children when it comes to parents, your child get to a certain age and they won't be stupid. There's yeah. nothing you can do about that. I don't care how great of a parent, how much you influence them. If this is what she decides to do, how does that make you a bad parent if you've done everything you could and she just still want to be stupid? Yeah, I mean, but you got to, and I do understand what you're saying. I mean, and it's one of those things where it's like, you got to prove to me that you're a good parent. Unfortunately, the onus is on you once yeah, your daughter starts taking them. dick on camera. Yeah, yeah. no. Like, it's... it's like, I, if I'm Lawrence Fishburne, I have a press conference today. Like, look, man, these are baby photos with us together. Here's why I went to a fifth grade recital. Here's the time we went to the beach and we spent it all time. Here's my, you know, like, I would have, I would probably break out everything I could to prove I was some type of father. Man, I just, I just wonder what the fuck is going through her head because when you come from money, which she does, yeah. they usually have a little bit better idea of how to become famous. Let me go out here and do something, build a business, money, something I mean, like that. Yeah. But now, I mean, that sounds like something some ignorant poor people do. Maybe he cut off. Maybe so. Yeah. She was like, oh, you want to cut me out being hairless? I'm going to go suck dick on camera. Yeah. About that shit. I bet you wish you would have kept me in the wheel now. Oh, Lauren. <laughs> Uh, the last thing I want to read, Drake's na Drake names biggest thank me later to regret, says Leak Hurt debut. Young money rapper Drake has revealed the biggest regrets behind the thank me later, behind, th behind thank me later, that's the name of his album. It says song leaks ultimately hurt the project's overall presentation. No, so dude. now he's admitting this shit is weak. Drake fans, can you please accept this? Leave me the fuck alone. This nigga says his shit was, was subpar. Not me. You, I mean, I do too, but he's agreeing with me now. He even knew it was whack. Niggas making excuses, but at least he's admitting he has a problem. In addition to unauthorized leaks, Drake said some songs simply could not fit the debut. Of course, because you made it a sad, sappy song about how fame sucks and you love Nicki Minaj and shit. The saddest part to me is that I would have made 9 a.m. in Dallas the intro to the album, but I did it the day of mastering, which is crazy, so it couldn't make the album. Drake said in an interview, that's probably my greatest upset that was the fact that it couldn't be on the physical disc and be part of that album. Darling was a loss just because it was never mixed, and every time I hear it in the club, you can never really hear the words. Most of the music we held for a long time, the stuff that did leak, it was pretty good references. Uh, it wasn't anything to be upset about. Shut it down leaked early was painful. I think it could have been bigger, a bigger record had it not been out there so long. And Fall For Your Type, I wish was on there, but, I'm, but I'll have other players for that record, so it's going to be good. Um, sounds like you're still talking about women's songs except for 9 a.m. in Dallas. Yeah, pretty much. I gave away free music for years, so we're good over here. Just allow it to be the soundtrack to your summer and enjoy it June 15th. Um, and let's see, he clarified his reaction and said good music leaking could work in his favor. 
I always said if I had put a if I had put out an album that was poor quality and music that people didn't enjoy, then I think the leaks would hurt me, Drake said in an interview. Because a lot of the feedback has been great. The word of mouth music is something that is to be enjoyed. I think it can help me. So June 15th, I'm still confident. Um, so I guess that was before his album released. Had to be. All right, well, y'all feel good about this episode? I do. Yeah. All right, man. Drake's album still sucks, though. Yeah, no doubt, man. I mean, I'm sorry, Drake, but you let everybody down. And I'm sorry to your fans. All right, guys, don't forget to call the show at 704-557-0186. And uh, you can email us, the Black Eye Tips at Gmail. So if you just listen to this episode and you disagree with something we said, or you do agree, or you think that Karen sounds fat. Fuck you. Or you think that I'm gay just because I occasionally enjoy watching multiple men have sex with one woman and another dude eat the semen out of her vagina. If you feel like that makes me gay, then maybe you should call the show, man. What's the weirdest point of y'all ever watched? I would like to know. I'm sure y'all watch some freaking shit than me. Um, I seen some of y'all tweets. Um, <laughs> yeah. This one girl turned her Twitter name to come on my tits. Damn. I seen that. And every time I was to her, I'm like, it. oh man. <laughs> I can't retweet this shit. But uh, anyway, guys, so uh, and make sure you join the Facebook group and go to the blog, go to the page on Podomatic, look on the right hand column, click the donate button, and help us keep this thing going. Um, and uh, until next time, follow us on Twitter. I'm at Rodimus Prime. I'm Say That Again. That is a D A T. And I'm Mr. Montgomery, Mr. Underscore Montgomery. All right, guys, so love you. You too, baby. Holla. Peace. Mwah. Smarter, but he's hurt. Used to hand his homework in first, like he was the classroom starter. Burst the tears, let him know she sees. See see nice fighting in class. Got a note last week to say he might not pass. Ask me if his daddy was sick of us, cause you ain't never pick him up. You see what his problem is. He don't know where his papa is. No positive male role model to play football or build railroad models. Is making the hole and you've been digging it. Cause you ain't been kicking it since you was old enough to hold bottles You weren't supposed to get introduced to that He don't deserve to get used to that Now I ain't asking you for money or to come back to me Some days it ain't sunny but it ain't so hard Just breaks my heart when I try to provide And he say